In the heart of the Balkans lies Serbia. The country is a refuge for many animals. Nature is very much alive and well in Serbia's forests. The country is young, yet full of old traditions. In some villages, time seems to have stood still. The wide expanse of steppes are home to both hunted and hunters. The rare golden jackal uses the cover of twilight, as does the eagle owl. A journey through an unknown country, full of nature's wonders. For thousands of years, life in Serbia has been dictated by the Danube River. Here, at the Iron Gate, the country's longest gorge, it breaks through the foothills of the Carpathian Mountains. Where dangerous rapids once foamed is now an artificial lake. Cranes head north heralding the advent of spring. The spectacular landscape of river and gorges beneath them is unique. More than 100 kilometers of the banks of the Danube are protected as part of the Djerda National Park. The steep hills are chamois country. The shoots, grasses and herbs here are only accessible to good climbers. Once upon a time, chamois were also to be found in the lower ranges until hunting by humans forced them into ever higher areas. Human beings are not the only hunters these shy animals have to fear. The company of lynxes is also to be avoided. A 30 to 50 kilogram chamois would be a great prize for a lynx. But this female is not in hunting mood. It's looking after young. The cubs are only a few weeks old and extremely curious. Everything has to be investigated and explored. A female lynx bears between two and five young a year and has to feed and look after them by herself. No easy task. The cubs are suckled until they're five months old. Thereafter, they eat the prey their mother brings home. Lynx territories vary in size according to how much prey is available. In Serbia, the cats need a hunting area of between 10 and 40 square kilometers. From the forest comes the mating call of a big bird. A capercaillie is wooing some hens. After a long overture performed high in a tree, he enters the arena for the grand finale. 
he has to wait for exactly the right moment. Each hen is only capable of conceiving for a short period. If the lovers are disturbed right at that moment, then all will have been in vain. Capercaillies react extremely sensitively to changes to their environment, one of the reasons they have become rarer in Central Europe. Richly structured and unspoilt forests are one requirement for their survival. They need undergrowth to hide in. But if the forest is too dense, these large birds have no room to fly. There are only few places of refuge left. The Iron Gate may also be the cradle of agriculture in Europe. Archaeologists have found traces of humans who cultivated plants and bred livestock here around 7,000 years ago. The hillsides overlooking the Danube are home to Europe's biggest moth, the giant peacock. A house cat has discovered such a moth in a cherry tree. The encounter ends without incident. The moth is waiting for darkness when it becomes active. It's a female looking for a good spot to lay her eggs. She only has a few days as she stopped eating. Shortly after laying her eggs, she will die. The giant peacock moth attaches up to 200 eggs to the tree bark. A wild cat has made its lair deep in the forest. The female is bringing up young and has to go out hunting. The two kittens take the opportunity of their mother's absence to have a look round. Wildcats are great explorers. They leave the den for the first time at around two weeks. These two are about six weeks old. The little ones are already practicing climbing and stalking. Wildcats are loners. In a few months, they will have to find their own territory. The mother returns, and the kittens are waiting for her in the den. The young cats are still being fed almost exclusively on milk, although they could be starting to get interested in the prey their mother brings back. But this time she's returned empty poured. In the north of Serbia, the Danube is lined with meadows and lakes.
ideal country for sea eagles. Two young birds have just found a good vantage point. A seagull's attempts to fish a dead eel out of the water don't go unnoticed. But it's not just the young eagle's attention that has been aroused. An adult bird has also spotted what's going on. The gull has no chance against the king of the air. The difficulties it was having are no problem for an eagle whose sharp claws won't drop anything very quickly. And with a wingspan of over two meters, it can grab fish much heavier than this little eel. There is an enchanted atmosphere about the meadows of the upper Danube lowlands. As valuable habitats for many wild animals and plants, they're now partially protected. The Serbian nature reserve is directly connected to national parks in Hungary and Croatia. Here, nature and conservation cross borders. A giant peacock moth caterpillar doing what it loves best, eating. It hatched a few weeks ago and is putting on weight with each leaf it consumes. Its favorite food is the foliage of fruit trees. The caterpillars grow up to 12 centimeters long until they pupate in the autumn. The following spring, a colorful moth will emerge from the cocoon. The caterpillar is not alone. This tree is also home to a tree frog. Normally, insects and their larvae are frog food. But the size of the caterpillar seems to confuse the frog, which pumps itself up to appear larger, without making much of an impression. From the meadows of the Danube to steppes and ancient forests, there are more kinds of animal in Serbia than almost any other European country. A golden jackal appears on the edge of the woods. A pregnant female. Wherever wolves are scarce or no longer present, jackal populations are on the rise. The pups are hungry. When the mother catches rats and mice, she regurgitates them for her young. The female is on her guard and scrutinizes precisely what comes in the vicinity of her young. She wouldn't be able to kill a fully grown boar, more likely the other way round. But the boar isn't quite sure what to make of the situation either.
Not far from the Upper Danube lowlands, nature reserve lies the village of Itvor. Here, there are still undrained wetlands. For the white stalks in the wet meadows, the buffet has just opened. The birds follow the cattle, which flush out all kinds of small animals. The storks are very hungry, as they have young to feed. Storks are not particularly choosy, and will eat locusts and snails, as well as frogs and amphibians, and even snakes and mice. Belly full, the stork returns to the nest. Every visitor is given a clattering welcome, an important means of communication among storks. One baby bird has already hatched. The parents are waiting for a second and third. Today, locusts are on the menu. The adult bird never gives out the food with its bill, but regurgitates it into the nest. The young have to pick it up by themselves. Traditionally, a stork's nest on your roof brings good luck. So it's always a matter of debate in the village as to who has the most inhabited nests. When the heat gets too much, the cows head for the water and a refreshing bath. A ferruginous duck steers her brood carefully through the tangle of water plants. On warmer days, the edible frogs work themselves into an audible frenzy. Many of the females have already spawned. Loudly, the males compete for the affection of the last females, which can be a risky business. A great crested grebe watches for a while. and then grabs a titbit. It's almost too big to swallow. Happy the frog that can restrain itself in the rough and tumble of the mating game. 7 a.m the start of the rush hour. Fresh milk brings out the villagers every morning. It's taken straight from the cow shed to the collection point where the dairy truck stops. A good opportunity to catch up on all the latest news. Two months later, the young storks are almost as big as their parents. Besides locusts, the adult birds also bring nesting material. A stork's nest can weigh up to 300 kilos. The young birds eat as much as they can, even cabbage leaves. Soon they'll weigh more than their parents. They'll need the weight to survive the long journey to Africa at the end of the summer.
towards evening, the cows make their way back to the village. The children don't have to lift a finger. Summer is now well and truly here. The fields of Voivodina province are full of sunflowers in bloom. People have been using sunflower seed oil for over a hundred years. One byproduct is sunflower honey, worth converting a truck into a beehive for. Mangalitsas try to avoid the afternoon heat. Some way downstream is a former dune landscape, the Deli Blatska Peschtela. By now, many of the dunes have disappeared under the vegetation growing on the sand of a sea which dried out five million years ago. This half-open landscape is ideal for pheasants and deer. Just under 200 years ago, the first dunes were planted, after Serbian sand had been blown all the way to Vienna. Something is bothering the deer. Wolves are only rarely sighted here. By daylight and on its own, the chances of the wolf catching anything are slim. The pheasant, and in particular its mate, are well camouflaged in the high grass. But the Peschera is home to predators from which it's almost impossible to hide. A long-legged buzzard awaits its chance. The cock with its bright colouring can be seen a long way off. The hen, on the other hand, should have a better chance of not being discovered. The buzzard, however, has excellent eyesight. there's not much the cock can do to help. Large parts of the Peshtera are meadowlands with sheep and goats eating the grass and herbs. Water is scarce and the livestock depends on a few artificial watering places. They aren't the only ones that benefit.
the sheep soon seek the cooling shade, and as soon as they've moved on, other guests gather. Gossamer-winged butterflies profit from the damp, churned-up earth. Using sense organs on their legs, they taste the surface before sucking up the dampness through their proboscis. By the track to the watering place, an eagle owl waits for prey. The track has become a main thoroughfare for thirsty animals and an ideal hunting ground for the afternoon. The rat supplies not only nutrients, but also water. At this time of year, for bee eaters, finding food is especially easy. They've started a small colony by a sandy bank. Some males are still on the lookout for a female. Bee eaters are fussy. They leave their old nesting holes to other birds, preferring something new, even if it means having to shift up to seven kilos of earth. Sparrows and starlings are the beneficiaries. The courtship ceremony includes feeding your chosen partner. They will only become a couple if everything is just right. Bee-eaters are gregarious birds. Some colonies number in the hundreds, so the best seats are usually quickly taken. The more often the male feeds, the stronger the bond later on. The variety of countryside means that Serbia has a huge diversity of species. In the shelter of a rocky outcrop live a group of susliks. A kestrel is circling, looking for somewhere to nest in the cliff face. Neighbours like that need watching. Suslicks are extremely alert animals, but kestrels are quicker. Time to go to ground. This time the kestrel is out of luck. But it may be back at any time. The sons have returned to the Zlatibor region to help their parents with the hay harvest. The countryside is now populated almost exclusively by old people. Most of the younger ones prefer to work and earn their money in the towns. The father locks the yoke on the oxen. The animals follow his every word.
pictures that recall a long forgotten era. The idyll is deceptive. More and more villages in the Serbian countryside are being abandoned. Forty kilometers to the east lies the village of Guča. Here the livestock is regularly treated to musical entertainment. The locals are practicing for the big day. Gucha is well known for its three-day brass band festival. According to the organizers, the biggest in Europe. The competition to find the golden trumpet has taken place here since 1961. Nowadays, 300,000 visitors a year come to the village to listen to the bands. All the participants give their best in Gucha. And they party late into the night. Traces of another party are to be found a hundred kilometers further south in central Serbia. The petrified remains of a wedding. According to the saga, humans wanted to marry a brother and sister and were turned by God into pillars of stone. Rain, wind and ice have eroded the earth around the pillars. Only the spot where one pillar is lying on the ground has been spared by the elements. Today this place is called Devil's Town and its inhabitants are hole dwellers. Sparrows and starlings have scraped out nests in the soft wall. Up here they're well protected against robbers. A hundred kilometers further on, between the Zlauter and Zlatibor mountains, lie the artificial lakes of the Uvats, a tributary of the Danube. At one of the reservoirs, conservationists and farmers got together and set up an unusual feeding place, clearly visible for the birds whose survival is threatened. Griffin vultures. Until the 1970s, the future of the vultures in the Zlatar Mountains was uncertain there were only seven breeding pairs left. Thanks to the extra feeding, numbers have increased 20-fold. Usually, the older vultures with the white collars call the shots.
Here, a few younger birds have obviously been able to assert themselves. They can easily be recognized by their brown collars. The scraps are left for the ravens. And the rest is taken care of by carrion flies. While the number of griffin vultures in Serbia has recovered, another bird remains extremely rare, the black stork. Most of the black storks in Serbia occur in the upper Danube lowlands nature reserve. They need the undisturbed quiet of the forest as well as waterways and lakes. The population is estimated at around 100 pairs. In contrast to their white cousins, these storks feed mainly on fish. The young birds are strengthening their wing muscles they're almost ready to leave the nest. Soon they will have to fend for themselves, but until then, the parents are being kept busy. The young birds are about two months old. When they leave the nest in a few days' time, the parents will take care of them for another month or so. After that, the young storks will make their own way to Africa, usually starting out before their parents. It'll be another three years until they reach sexual maturity. In the far east of Serbia lie the foothills of the Carpathian Mountains. A chapel was once built here, hidden in the forest, at a very special place. A cold water geyser. CO2 causes the water to rise to the surface. The stream is home to fire salamanders. The amphibians need water to survive. As larvae, salamanders live exclusively in water. Once they reach adulthood, the environment only has to be damp. Then they hide between moss, leaves and stones. In the autumn, this toad will bury itself in the earth and spend the winter underground. But a snack beforehand would be most welcome. Common toads are cannibals. Most of the streams and rivers in Serbia flow into the Danube along with meltwater from the Balkan mountains. This quiet spot on the river Timok is inhabited by otters.
These sleek creatures are found at heights of up to two and a half thousand meters. Otters are hardy and can live in the coldest rivers. They do not, however, have a layer of fat like polar bears or sea lions. They are kept warm by their thick fur, which has a density of up to 50,000 hairs per square centimeter. These skillful swimmers live mainly on fish, but also catch crabs or even young waterfowl. Above the waterfall stands a traditional dairy where sheep's cheese is being made. Here, precipitated raw cheese is being cut up before boiling. The soft mass is pressed into molds, which will then be allowed to dry. In the old days, the cheese was left six months to mature. Today, there isn't the time. The cheese is sold after three months. That way, more turnover can be achieved. A golden October brings the last few warm days. The fawns are five months old now and have put on a lot of weight for the winter. Likewise, the cranes. The birds are resting, gathering strength for the further flight south. Even at this time of year, the birds perform their dances. They're not only mating rituals, but also serve to strengthen bonds between the pairs. Autumn in Serbia. All over the country, the colors change. It's time for the red deer to start their courtship. Vigorously, the dominant stag tries to assert its position. There are plenty of competitors to impress. Above all, the stag has to keep his harem of hinds in sight for weeks on end. Until the hinds are ready to mate, they avoid contact. Over and over, the stag flames, inhaling the scent of its hinds to see if they're ready yet. Then the first serious rival turns up. Matters come to a head. 
following established rules of combat, the stags push and shove each other backwards and forwards. They would never attack each other from the side. The fight is not about hurting their opponent, it's a trial of strength, but anything other than harmless and with frequent injuries. The fight is over. The dominant stag wins the day. The loser withdraws from the herd. When the cranes head south, it's time for the brown bear to seek a cave to hibernate in. It won't be long before there's hardly anything left to eat. Dark clouds bring the first snow. The bear is still looking for food. It harvests the last berries of the year. With the winter, the cycle of the seasons has come full circle. In Serbia, the unknown country in the heart of the Balkans. Not far from the Upper Danube lowlands nature reserve lies the village of Itvor. Here there are still undrained wetlands. For the white stalks in the wet meadows, the buffet has just opened. The birds follow the cattle, which flush out all kinds of small animals. The stalks are very hungry, as they have young to feed. Storks are not particularly choosy and will eat locusts and snails as well as frogs and amphibians and even snakes and mice. Belly full, the stork returns to the nest. Every visitor is given a clattering welcome an important means of communication among storks. One baby bird has already hatched. The parents are waiting for a second and third. Today, locusts are on the menu. The adult bird never gives out the food with its bill, but regurgitates it into the nest. The young have to pick it up by themselves. Traditionally, a stork's nest on your roof brings good luck. 
so it's always a matter of debate in the village as to who has the most inhabited nests. When the heat gets too much, the cows head for the water and a refreshing bath. A ferruginous duck steers her brood carefully through the tangle of water plants. On warmer days, the edible... As larvae, salamanders live exclusively in water. Once they reach adulthood, the environment only has to be damp. Then they hide between moss, leaves and stones. In the autumn, this toad will bury itself in the earth and spend the winter underground. But a snack beforehand would be most welcome. Common toads are cannibals. Most of the streams and rivers in Serbia flow into the Danube along with meltwater from the Balkan mountains. This quiet spot on the river Timok is inhabited by otters. These sleek creatures are found at heights of up to two and a half thousand meters. Otters are hardy and can live in the coldest rivers. They do not, however, have a layer of fat like polar bears or sea lions. They're kept warm by their thick fur which has a density of up to 50,000 hairs per square centimeter. These skillful swimmers live mainly on fish, but also catch crabs or even young waterfowl. Above the waterfall stands a traditional dairy where sheep's cheese is being made. Here, precipitated raw cheese is being cut up before boiling. The soft mass is pressed into molds, which will then be allowed to dry. So let's try to avoid the afternoon heat. Some way downstream is a former dune landscape, the Deli Blatska Peschtela. By now, many of the dunes have disappeared under the vegetation growing on the sand of a sea which dried out five million years ago. This half-open landscape is ideal for pheasants and deer. Just under 200 years ago, the first dunes were planted after Serbian sand had been blown all the way to Vienna. Something is bothering the deer. Wolves are only rarely sighted here.
By daylight and on its own, the chances of the wolf catching anything are slim. The pheasant, and in particular its mate, are well camouflaged in the high grass. But the Peschera is home to predators from which it's almost impossible to hide. A long-legged buzzard awaits its chance. The cock, with its bright colouring, can be seen a long way off. The hen, on the other hand, should have a better chance of not being discovered. The buzzard, however, has excellent eyesight. there's not much the cock can do to help. Large parts of the Peshtera are meadowlands with sheep and goats eating the grass and herbs. Here the livestock is regularly treated to musical entertainment. The locals are practicing for the big day. Gucha is well known for its three-day brass band festival. According to the organizers, the biggest in Europe. The competition to find the golden trumpet has taken place here since 1961. Nowadays, 300,000 visitors a year come to the village to listen to the bands. All the participants give their best in Gucha. And they party late into the night. Traces of another party are to be found a hundred kilometers further south in central Serbia. The petrified remains of a wedding. According to the saga, humans wanted to marry a brother and sister and were turned by God into pillars of stone. Rain, wind and ice have eroded the earth around the pillars. Only the spot where one pillar is lying on the ground has been spared by the elements. Today this place is called Devil's Town and its inhabitants are hole dwellers. Sparrows and starlings have scraped out nests in the soft wall. Up here they're well protected against robbers. A hundred kilometers further on, between the Zlauter and Zlatibor mountains, lie the artificial lakes of the Uvats, a tributary of the Danube. It's time for the red deer to start their courtship. Vigorously, the dominant stag tries to assert its position. There are plenty of competitors to impress. Oh. 
Above all, the stag has to keep his harem of hinds in sight, for weeks on end. Until the hinds are ready to mate, they avoid contact. Over and over, the stag flames, inhaling the scent of its hinds to see if they're ready yet. Then the first serious rival turns up. Matters come to a head. Following established rules of combat, the stags push and shove each other backwards and forwards. They would never attack each other from the side. The fight is not about hurting their opponent, it's a trial of strength, but anything other than harmless and with frequent injuries. The fight is over. The dominant stag wins the day. The loser withdraws from the herd. When the cranes head south, it's time for the brown bear to seek a cave to hibernate in. It won't be long before there's hardly anything left to eat. Six months to mature. Today there isn't the time. The cheese is sold after three months. That way more turnover can be achieved. A golden October brings the last few warm days. The fawns are five months old now and have put on a lot of weight for the winter. Likewise, the cranes. The birds are resting, gathering strength for the further flight south. Even at this time of year, the birds perform their dances. They're not only mating rituals, but also serve to strengthen bonds between the pairs. Autumn in Serbia. All over the country, the colors change. It's time for the red deer to start their courtship. Vigorously, the dominant stag tries to assert its position. There are plenty of competitors to impress.
Above all, the stag has to keep his harem of hinds in sight, for weeks on end. Until the hinds are ready to mate, they avoid contact. By the track to the watering place, an eagle owl waits for prey. The track has become a main thoroughfare for thirsty animals and an ideal hunting ground for the afternoon. The rat supplies not only nutrients, but also water. At this time of year, for bee-eaters, finding food is especially easy. They've started a small colony by a sandy bank. Some males are still on the lookout for a female. Bee-eaters are fussy. They leave their old nesting holes to other birds, preferring something new, even if it means having to shift up to seven kilos of earth. Sparrows and starlings are the beneficiaries. The courtship ceremony includes feeding your chosen partner. They will only become a couple if everything is just right. Bee-eaters are gregarious birds. Some colonies number in the hundreds, so the best seats are usually quickly taken. The more often the male feeds, the stronger the bond later on. The variety of countryside means that Serbia has a huge diversity of species. In the shelter of a rocky outcrop live a group of susliks. A kestrel is circling, looking for somewhere to nest in the cliff face. Neighbours like that need watching. The earth and spend the winter underground. But a snack beforehand would be most welcome. Common toads are cannibals. Most of the streams and rivers in Serbia flow into the Danube, along with meltwater from the Balkan mountains. This quiet spot on the river Timok is inhabited by otters. These sleek creatures are found at heights of up to two and a half thousand meters. Otters are hardy and can live in the coldest rivers. They do not, however, have a layer of fat like polar bears or sea lions. They're kept warm by their thick fur which has a density of up to 50,000 hairs per square centimetre. 
These skillful swimmers live mainly on fish, but also catch crabs or even young waterfowl. Above the waterfall stands a traditional dairy, where sheep's cheese is being made. Here, precipitated raw cheese is being cut up before boiling. The soft mass is pressed into molds, which will then be allowed to dry. In the old days, the cheese was left six months to mature. Today, there isn't the time. The cheese is sold after three months. That way, more turnover can be achieved. Or, more likely, the other way round. But the boar isn't quite sure what to make of the situation either. Not far from the Upper Danube lowlands nature reserve lies the village of Itvor. Here there are still undrained wetlands. For the white stalks in the wet meadows, the buffet has just opened. The birds follow the cattle, which flush out all kinds of small animals. The stalks are very hungry, as they have young to feed. Storks are not particularly choosy and will eat locusts and snails as well as frogs and amphibians and even snakes and mice. Belly full, the stork returns to the nest. Every visitor is given a clattering welcome an important means of communication among storks. One baby bird has already hatched. The parents are waiting for a second and third. Today, locusts are on the menu. The adult bird never gives out the food with its bill, but regurgitates it into the nest. The young have to pick it up by themselves. Traditionally, a stork's nest on your roof brings good luck. So it's always a matter of debate in the village as to who has the most inhabited nests. When the heat gets too much, the cows head for the water and a refreshing bath. Abandoned. Forty kilometers to the east lies the village of Gucha. Here the livestock is regularly treated to musical entertainment. The locals are practicing for the big day. Gucha is well known for its three-day brass band festival, 
according to the organizers, the biggest in Europe. The competition to find the golden trumpet has taken place here since 1961. Nowadays, 300,000 visitors a year come to the village to listen to the bands. All the participants give their best in Gucha. And they party late into the night. Traces of another party are to be found a hundred kilometers further south in central Serbia. The petrified remains of a wedding. According to the saga, humans wanted to marry a brother and sister and were turned by God into pillars of stone. Rain, wind and ice have eroded the earth around the pillars. Only the spot where one pillar is lying on the ground has been spared by the elements. Today this place is called Devil's Town and its inhabitants are hole dwellers. Sparrows and starlings have scraped out nests in the soft wall. Up here they're well protected against robbers. A hundred kilometers further on, between the Zlauter and Zlatibor mountains, by the track to the watering place, an eagle owl waits for prey. The track has become a main thoroughfare for thirsty animals and an ideal hunting ground for the afternoon. The rat supplies not only nutrients, but also water. At this time of year, for bee eaters, finding food is especially easy. They've started a small colony by a sandy bank. Some males are still on the lookout for a female. Bee eaters are fussy. They leave their old nesting holes to other birds, preferring something new, even if it means having to shift up to seven kilos of earth. Sparrows and starlings are the beneficiaries. The courtship ceremony includes feeding your chosen partner. They will only become a couple if everything is just right. Bee eaters are gregarious birds. Some colonies number in the hundreds, so the best seats are usually quickly taken. The more often the male feeds, the stronger the bond later on. The variety of countryside means that Serbia has a huge diversity of species.
In the shelter of a rocky outcrop live a group of susliks. A kestrel is circling. 